Hey guys, it's us again. Hello. Hopefully everybody's having a good week or had a good week. Hey guys, wherever you're watching this, doesn't matter if you're on YouTube or YouTube or maybe YouTube or anything else, make sure to hit like, comment, hit subscribe, maybe leave us a question. All right. Thanks. Right now, uh, just before the show, I checked my stocks. Don't look at them. And I have one question for Marcus. <laughs> no. My question is, other than me making absolutely terrible stock picks, uh, is there a reason that uh, that my stocks are down? Can you can you riddle me that, Batman? Yeah. Uh, so um, on the day that we're filming this, U.S. non-farm payrolls got reported. Can you explain what that is? It's employment in the United States, basically. Right. Um, how many people got jobs and what the unemployment rate is in the United States, more importantly in this case. Right. So um, the, the surprise is the strength in the U.S. job market. Right. So it's like a good news is bad news situation. Right. So what this means is that because the employment engine in the united states in the american economy is still strong and it's too strong in the eyes of the federal reserve the federal reserve is going to have to move more dramatically to continue to increase interest rates because more people have jobs yeah so because there are fewer people that are unemployed and because more people are getting jobs it shows strength in the United States. And the Federal Reserve is looking for signs of weakness in the United States so that inflation doesn't continue at the pace that right. it's, it's going. So employment is one indicator of inflation. And a concern of the Federal Reserve is just too many people working. There's not... Um, there aren't enough job vacancies, right? So too much money, too many people, too many people spending. They want to see signs that there are cracks in this strength in the American economy, right. and they're not seeing it yet. As a result, um, we will see another 75 basis point hike from the Federal Reserve. So uh, the problem is, is that you know at the beginning of November when the Fed meets again, we're going to see higher rates again. Right, And we've been talking about the two-year uh, treasury yield. That's going up today. Right. Um, because good news, a lot of people are working. Bad news, inflation's still going to be showing high, and the Federal Reserve needs to fight it. Right. Hmm. Well, that's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. Canada, likely to follow suit. Uh, yes, uh, Canada also had their employment numbers out. Yeah. Um, and they were a little better than expected also. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy, right? Like, we're looking at all these leading indicators and we're seeing what borrowing costs are doing to the economy and how it's going to impact the economy. We can see it. Like, we've got floor seats to this. Mm -hmm. But... The indicators that the Federal Reserve and the Bank of Canada look at are still showing inflation's hot. Right. And it's, it's almost like you got to think of it like this, all of this money that was injected into the system has to move through the system. Right. And it hasn't moved through. Right. right? It's, um, so it's resulting in these um, high employment, low unemployment numbers. Mm hmm um, a lot of that is like job participation. So I think the hope is that more people will re-enter the workforce. So if more people re-enter the workforce, then technically more people are unemployed. So there's a kind of a difference between people that are like sitting on the sidelines and people that are unemployed. Right. People who are unemployed are like actively searching for a job. Right. Whereas people that are on the sidelines are like, I checked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we've created a bit of a problem because we paid so many people to not work that not working is the new norm? That maybe those people are taking a little more to get kind of coaxed back to work. Right. And if we had 
more people looking for work, it would create some of the indications that we need in order to create more price stability in the labor force right. and tamp down some of the inflation numbers that we're seeing. Right. But so it's kind of like the hope that this will happen, but it hasn't happened. So you see the markets rallying one day or two days because they think that some indication has come out that one of these data points that the central banks will look at to judge the future of inflation, they think maybe one of these data points is coming in favorably. Mm -hmm. Like the two-year yield is a response to that. The strength of the US dollar is a response to that. So all of these things, when the market seems to think it, they, those are things have peaked, they think that, you know, it, they're indicating that, you know, okay, we see some weakness. Right. We believe that it's going to give some ammunition to the central bankers to not increase interest rates as rapidly as we fear. Right. And again, you got to keep in mind, markets are kind of always optimistic. Right, right, right. And um, on a day like today when, you know, we should be kind of like, you would think generally like if you take it at face, face value, it's a good thing, right? Like right. more people have jobs. Right. But it's a bad thing. Yeah, no, it, it, it's weird that like, you know, uh, you think of such a good thing as, you know, being a bad thing, really. Yeah, listen, the whole thing is a bit scary, right? Yeah. It's it, it, like this level of rapid rising interest rates. Um, it's not yet quantified what it's going to do to the economy, but it's, you know, yeah, it's going to affect asset prices. <clears throat> Phil, Phil, love you, Phil. Uh, Love you, Phil. Is 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 sh car shopping right now, and uh, car financing rates are seven ninety nine, eight ninety nine. I, I mean, it's crazy, that, and those will only go higher. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's nuts. Um. All right. Well, so I mean, that's it. Listen. Um. Right now, it's a very, very strange time, and until we see weakness, we will not see a break from these interest rate hikes. So until so to be clear, until the economy looks like it's falling, that's when things will get better. Like Yeah, you remember we talked about this like a while ago. We were like how are they expecting a soft landing of the economy mm -hmm. when they need leading indicators to show that the economy is falling apart in order to stop increasing interest rates. Right. It's almost like the hope is, is that they can increase interest rates until the economy just about breaks mm -hmm. and then drop interest rates to support it. Right. Um, it's like a roller coaster. The problem is, is the higher you got to jack these interest rates up, the more probable a more pronounced recession becomes. Right. And that's where we are right now. Right. You think we're in the recession? I mean... I mean, it's, it's, it's an inevitable. Yeah. Like, listen, the... The unemployment rate definitely isn't telling us that. Right. But the growth rate of our economy certainly, certainly. Is. Yeah, listen, it's not great. It's not great. But what do we focus on, right? We focus on helping our borrowers. We focus on figuring out ways that we can help them kind of withstand over this period of time. Interest rates are going to rise and then interest rates are going to fall. Yeah. It's all about timing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. There will be a heyday. There will be a day where it's you yeah, know, the you know good what? news comes. Hang on a second. Matt, you want to put up the... So this is um, real um, residential property prices for Canada. It's an index, so it's adjusted. And it'll show, it shows you basically um, the run-up that we've had in uh, property values with cheap money. Um, and you can see previous run-ups um, and corrections. So like in the 1980s, um, the mid 1980s, you can see another one in the kind of early 90s where, you know, they just kind of dropped and plateaued for a while. You can see we've had a clear run up. You can see the last um, most recent drop. Um, I think, you know, at a time like this, if you own Canadian real estate, you've got to be, um, you got you to continue to think about that the factors that help Canadian real estate, right? Like we do still have a supply issue in Canada, right? Right. We're not making enough homes for the demand. And we also have a huge demand of people that want to come to Canada. Right. So we can hope 
And um, although, it, it, listen, in times like this, when real estate prices are going to start dropping, you know, it, it can get dark, but you have to think about the macroeconomic fundamentals that will hold real estate prices relatively stable. So we're going to see a drop, a continued drop in real estate prices, um, but it will, it will be you know, somewhat more resilient because of the demand for real estate and the lack of supply. Right. We hope. Yeah, we hope. Yeah. And I guess depending on where you are too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. For sure. Like we've already seen areas like kind of some of these like sub outer suburb communities London, like Kitchener, Hamilton, London, kind of stuff, yeah. Windsor. They're already taking really big price hits right. as people... Uh, who thought that they were leaving and not working in Toronto or major centers sell their homes. And being called back to work. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Going into some questions. Um, I am a bit sad Why? right now, just to let oh, you know, no. just because you're not going to be here for a couple of weeks. Uh, but we can, I'll, I'll phone in. I know. It's just not the same. Yeah, like a week and a bit. Not, I'm not going to go on for long. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's good. That's sweet of you. Yeah. Makes me sad. Um, all right. Are you guys ready? A couple questions. So, uh, hey, guys. I'm hoping you can help me figure out a solution because I've hit a wall at my bank. Uh, I work in sales, so most of my earnings are based off my commissions. And I've been trying to get approved for mortgage at my bank, but they won't approve me for whatever or for, for anywhere near the amount that I want. They won't recognize all the commission income I generate. I also have some savings and some significant RRSPs. I've heard of alternative lenders and understand that their interest rates are quite high, but are they the only option? So to be so so first off, just to be clear, I'm just gonna fix my mic first. Um alternative lender rates are not extremely that, high. They're not that yeah, much. They're not, they're not that much higher. Like you're looking at like whatever, 50 basis points you know, something like that, a 50 basis point spread, depending on, you know, your, your, you know, your information, right? It's strange, right? Like that spread should be a little higher. And it in, has in, it, the in this market, right. I think that it's going to go higher. Right. 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 right? right like right. just based on kind of some of the stuff we're talking about right now, yeah. that, the, the, the margin or the yield that they're going to demand for the risk on that credit is we're going to see it start increasing. The risk being because the economy is going to fall. Well, because you're dealing with like a lend a borrower who's kind of categorized as being higher risk, right? Right. So, you know, in a a market where everyone's trying to move to risk free, the cost of every incremental unit of risk becomes pricier. Right. 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 And a lot of the people who are taking these kind of mortgages, you know, I mean, uh, not listen. We don't. I, I'll tell you, for the most part, these people are not risky, right? Like they are self-employed people who are hustling, who are, you know, very capable of making ends meet and will do what it takes to make ends meet. Yeah. They may have some bruising on the credit that needs to get fixed. Um, they might not have as consistent an income stream as someone who's making an employed wage. Mm -hmm. um, and typically because they're going to a B lender, they've got more equity. Right. Yeah. Which is why the rate's not that much exactly. higher. Yeah. Um, but in the case like this, you got to think at a time like this, like the kind of what companies do, what people do is they, they you got to analyze like what are the rates of return you're getting on your savings? Mm -hmm. And maybe it's time to apply some against the debt, depending on what the relative rates are of things. Yeah. It depends. And of course, like, I mean, there are other products, not just from alternative lenders, right? Mm -hmm. Where if you have some savings or you have some investments or something like that, then we can use that to offset what you really qualify for. So if you qualify for whatever, $300,000 and you have $300,000 in assets, then we can likely get you something around the $600,000 mark, yeah. right? And yeah. like, the, the, you know, just kind of what Marcus said, like, I have the conversation time and time again where clients say to me, you know what I mean? Like, well, I'm making a ton of money. You know, my credit is okay. I've always made my payments. So what's the problem? You know what I mean? And the only answer that I can give them is I totally get it. 
Like I understand, you know what I mean? I, I get where you're coming from. We just have to play by the bank's rules, unfortunately. And there's yeah. some lenders that, that, you know, I like, I like to say squint a little harder when it comes to what qualifies. Right. Yeah. So, and unfortunately in a time like this, the lenders are human and they're glued to their TVs and they're seeing what's happening in the market. Are they watching Dahmer? Do you think? <laughs> Maybe in the evening. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I bet. I don't know what they're, e- what they're watching in, in the evening. Right. I can tell you, I just watched the offer. The got the making of the oh it's so good oh my god so good what a great TV series that is yeah oh great um but I can tell you like they're human right the people that are underwriting risk you know get scared mm-hmm. right and they maybe the reason why they're underwriting risk is because they kind of have a higher sensitivity to it right yeah so yeah, yeah. in times like these it gets difficult yeah it's it's like that pendulum right like it's gonna swing in both directions right mm-hmm. now it's swinging in fear. Right. And in that direction. And, you know, until we see more liquidity in the market and lower interest rates, it's going to stay here for a bit. Right. I feel like you would be good at underwriting risk. Yeah, I'm pretty good at it. You're conservative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that how you vote? I'm just joking. You won't get into that. All right. I'm going to go into another question. Mm hmm. Did we answer that question? We did answer that. I question. think so. I, like I mean, it, like again, it it that that person should hopefully they have uh, should get in touch with us. Yeah, because or like, a broker. I would want to dive more into the details of that file. Yeah, no, right. which is kind of what we always say. But mm-hmm. Yeah, but but yeah, a person like this should not be trying to put themselves inside the box that the bank creates. For yeah, them. exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Okay. Hi, Justin and Marcus. Hi. Hi. Um, I've been looking into the idea of taking out a second mortgage to be able to put some money away in investments. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly new at this, so I'm looking into something relatively low risk. And I've heard investing in real estate is is a pretty safe bet. (laughs) What would you recommend? I'm not even going to touch this. (laughs) I don't know, man. If you're listening, like if you're listening on an audio platform, Marcus is frustrated. He's not frustrated. I'm not He's frustrated. Just it's just hard answer to, to give right now. I, listen, it's it's dependent on your time horizon, like everything else. Right. Right. At times like this, when there's uncertainty in the market and things look relatively bleak, typically the people who jump in and buy make money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, that being said, we still haven't put a fine point on how much interest rates are going to rise. Right. Conversely, the moment we do put that fine point on how much interest rates are going to rise, the feeling that property values are going to, if not just stabilize, begin to start to blow up. Yeah. Begin to head back up. And again, there is a very, very well illustrated supply and demand problem for real estate here in Canada. Mm -hmm. So, Um, I would say it would certainly depend on the type of real estate you want to buy and your time horizon. Right. Right. And you know, how, depending on how you answer those questions, like if you have a relatively long time horizon, Mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe you're going to be holding this place, new principal residence, and you were looking at a house and that house was a million dollars and now it's seven hundred thousand dollars. I don't know if we've seen that level of drop already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty scary. Yeah. It's a pretty big drop. But whatever, if you've seen a moderate drop so far, I think we're seeing bigger drops in the stuff on the fringes and like maybe like higher end properties. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, really, you see the drops in the parts of the market where the the homeowners are more motivated and really need to sell. Right. No, of course. And if more than if if more supply comes on in one area of the market where the homeowner needs to sell you're going to see a higher uh, or, or, or greater uh, drop in, in pricing right so if your time horizon is your principal residence you're going to be there for 10 15 years whatever it is um it's a pretty good idea yeah yeah no 100%. and if you're buying rental income and you know cap rates now are different from where they were because interest rates are different from where they were um might make sense right 
Absolutely. And if you're looking to like look get, at the rental income, look what's happening with rental. Income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As people sit on the sidelines and stop buying, they need to rent. Mm -hmm. And just to illustrate how little housing we have, rentals are through the roof. Yeah. Because there's still a limited supply. Right. People have to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, just just something to add to this uh, question is like if you're looking for something if you're looking for an amount of money to be able to invest with, getting a second mortgage or getting like a lump sum of, of cash is probably going to make you jump the gun on some sort of uh, on, on, on something, right? So getting a line of credit or something like that is probably the way to go about that. I think so. I think it depends on what you're trying to buy. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you want to be cautious right now. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's time to be cautious. Yeah. Marcus? Always says it's a time to be cautious. Yes, sir. I think we have one more. Okay. Hold on one second. It's never as bad as you think it is. But it's also never as good as you think it is. Right. Over the course of the pandemic, I've accrued some pretty hefty high interest rate debt. I'm looking to access some of the... It just means like accumulated. What? I see you looking confused. No, no just means I like don't. Uh, someone used a word yesterday that I didn't know. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised that like meant enough to stand out for you. Right? No, it was a really, hold on. I've made a call into where I need to make a call into. And by the end of the show, we'll know what the word is. Okay. Hey guys, over the course of the pandemic, I've accrued some pretty hefty high interest rate debt. I'm looking to access some of the equity in my house to pay these debts off. Uh, the issue is my credit score has really taken a hit during all of this, so I'm not sure I'll be able to qualify. I'm also worried uh, that if I am able to qualify, the interest rate uh, would be so high that I might as well just keep the money sitting on my credit cards. Can you point me in the right direction? <clears throat> I mean, keeping money on your credit cards is never... Um, I know. You know, I'd love to get some more information here. Mm -hmm. Um. Like, what kind of property is it? Where is it? Right. How marketable is the property? Because it's like a lot of sectors in real estate right now, there's no supply. Like, there's nothing being sold on the right. market. So you can actually get a decent price if, if this person was to sell. And that is where I'm leaning. Like, no, not working right now, right? Right, not working yet. So, like, it's or, been, or wasn't working and accumulated debt. But, like, yeah. are they back to work? Uh, it doesn't specify. Okay. But if she says I wasn't working, then I'm assuming... They, or if they say they're but the credit's damaged yes and it's correct. so like listen normally what i would say is you take a second you pay that credit down you increase the credit score mm -hmm. get the credit score where it needs to be the income is where it needs to be and then you get a brand new a mortgage right yeah slam no, dunk course. yeah i would definitely like right off the bat if they are employed and the credit is fixable let's fix the credit yeah that's subject to there being enough equity in the home right okay if they're not employed mm -hmm. And we cannot exit them into a good mortgage. Mm -hmm. It depends on how much equity there is in the home and what the alternatives are. Right. Because you, I mean, you're going to take on, again, time horizon. You're going to take on second debt mm -hmm. and you're going to need to, I mean, unemployed. Like I thought nobody was unemployed based on these employment numbers yeah. that we're seeing. <laughs> that's, uh, why, that's why I am, oh, hold on. I might use my word of the day. Uh, delineating mm. that she is working or they are working does that work no doesn't work delineate was the word from last night though okay oh that dinner that you were yeah. at yeah okay like it's like what to illustrate and to inform do you not know what the word is delineate he delineated his to portray precisely or indicate the exact position yeah of yeah so I think it's nautical right I don't know. Yeah. But it's used to say, like, here's my position. I'm going to delineate uh, the um, delineation. Yeah. Delineate. Like disclosing my. <laughs> I think so. I mean, yeah. I'm not a thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What was I just saying? I mean, it, I, you don't want to, like, if, you, if, if the likelihood of getting that job and fixing that credit is low or is 
going to take some time. You have to keep in mind that you're putting someone into debt to fix something right. at a time when debt is more expensive. Right. And asset prices are falling. So, you know, you got to kind of time this stuff that we're talking about, mm-hmm. right? When do rates peak? Um, when do prices stabilize? Like, it's again, it's risk propensity here, right. right? So for that person, they might not have the time horizon to hold on for that long. Right. No, of course. So we got to talk to them. Yeah. But we can get you a better rate than your credit card. For I sure. think that's what that yeah, comes yeah, yeah. For to. sure. For sure. I'm just yeah. saying, I'm trying to play this out for a longer term solution. For no, me, no. Right? Of course. Of course. Hmm. Well. Love being here. Should we call it quits? Yeah. For the day? Quit it for today. Quit it. Quit it. Thanks, buddy. All right. Anytime. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt.